Hi, greetings to each one of you. I am Dr. Bala Subramanyam, an anatomist by profession and I have an interest in digital learning. I work at this institution, KMCH, Institute of Health Sciences and Research in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. The Millennium student is uh, uh, unique, is slightly different from uh, uh, when we were students. Unique because they belong to the so-called Generation X category. They have all kinds of information now available online and their expectations are also uh, totally different from uh, the days when there was no internet and the pre-generation uh, X uh, days. Let's look at this story. Let's imagine that there is a couple doctors. This madam is a gynecologist and um, you know it's nice to have a couple doctors having a little fight at home. Her motto is save the fundus and see a life. That means she is referring to the uterine fundus because she is a obstetric uh, doctor. That's good. It's a very nice motto. But then her husband counters to say no, see the fundus and save a life because he is a neurologist. Okay, so his fundus is different. Uh, her reference to the fundus is different. In other words, can we use medical terminologies and have a story of the clash of the titans? So that's a very, very good example of a comparison and a contrast. Look at this. No matter how many times you study neuroanatomy, recharge again and again because you tend to forget. Next. Thank you, organizers of this uh, program, Marvelous Medicine. I am fortunate to be with you all. Uh, to reintroduce myself in, in my own way, I am a chronic repeater to this group. That means I keep coming again and again every Thursday to attend the sessions as a participant. But as a speaker, this is also uh, my, this is my third attempt. So, I am a chronic repeater and this is my third attempt. Look at this. I can, in this, in this photograph, I can spot a lot of cells which are pyramidal in nature. So, suppose we think this is a pyramidal cell, certainly good enough to, to, to demonstrate in terms of a, a shape. But then, this is basically uh, rusting and painting combination and appearance is like pyramidal neurons. Now, whichever way we look at it, metaphor, sarcasm, pun, humor, whatever it is, a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or an action to which it is not literally applicable, then you know, we are trying to link something known to something to be learned. Next, I am passionate to innovate and experiment in this direction. And I share with you some of the uh, slides that I have worked on in the last five years. Now, I am sure you will all remember these terminologies when you went through the uh, medical course and subsequently also in your practice red currant jelly, anchovy sauce, maple syrup. Unfortunately, although I have also gone through the course, I have never seen this red currant jelly. I am, I am not, I don't know anything about this anchovy sauce. Maple syrup, amko kuch bhi nahi pata. The first time I saw maple syrup was when I went to Canada, I went to the Niagara Falls. You know, there's a small restaurant on the Canadian side of the Niagara Falls. In that restaurant, they had kept an, uh, show pieces, uh, you know, demo bottles containing maple syrup. 
that's when i realized okay this is how a maple syrup looks for me maple syrup look like urine but then i am not comfortable with these terminologies so i am more keen on if some some teacher can give me some kind of a live lively examples that is more understandable to me like this or this certainly i will uh, develop a, a greater uh, appetite for uh, um, learning medicine basically the lack of familiarity is as an important factor medical students around the world therefore need mnemonics that are culturally relevant now there are literature available in this in this kind of an approach gastrology use of culinary terms in medicine british medical journal 1979 so we know so many names raspberry tumor strawberry tumor etc etc similarly you will also notice that there is another category called zoography use of animal terms in medicine we'll just take one example because there are any number and we all know it but then for the sake of discussion let's just concentrate on just one terminology we will use the word fishy terms you see that alone you see the spectrum fish net appearance cod fish appearance sturgeon's eggs fish scales mitral stenosis fish mouth appearance fish flesh appearance fish e terms of fish uh, skin appearance or ichthyosis nervous simplex salmon patch another salmon patch retina so many just one one single terminology and there are so many fishes in medicine look at it another way how to understand high speed data transfer you can you can use an example from medicine in terms of dna content a single sperm has 37.5 mb of data a single seminal ejaculate transfers 150 sorry 1587 gb of data in 3 seconds see you see the comparison and the humor at the bottom of it is speeds higher than this gives no tangible benefits humor that treats sinister subjects like death disease deformity handicap or warfare with bitter amusement and presents such tragic distressing or morbid topics in humorous terms that is there in built in all our uh, communication strategies there may be different names to it but it is there anatomy therefore i would say in more recent years with the develop, uh, development of technology and its availability widespread anatomy is real its presentation is virtual its appreciation is augmented and aided by artificial intelligence medicine was traditionally known as an art and not exactly as a science it has picked up its uh, uh, dignified status as a science in 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 more recent uh, uh, centuries no doubt medical images of clinical science and pathology were communicated through metaphors in those days when technology was not there when you could uh, pull down the web and you can you can show this and that and this picture and that diagram in the earlier days we didn't have all this so we had to rely upon uh, important communication comparisons and that's maybe probably why we have this anchovy sauce and maple syrups etc therefore analogies and metaphors have seems to have a very very long uh, historical origin they have served as as teaching aids memory enhancers and retention for medical students nurses and uh, doctors and this kind of remembering using uh, this kind of uh, similarities has stood the test of time the continued use 
of metaphors has given rise to an ongoing debate in certain parts of the world due to the usage of inappropriate or unfamiliar metaphors which are not locally or culturally relevant or available now that's an important point to remember because these are memory aids they are useful for exam purposes for remembering and also they bring about light humor in our understanding of the subject it now you see coming back to how how you fit it into our uh, uh, the curriculum or the 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 content remember we do teach the core curriculum beyond that if time permits we will allow uh, more content to be given to the students nice to know and other things however let's concentrate on the core curriculum and can we consider a situation where the students are let to look out of the window for more information can technology help you see this is another interesting slide when coffee kicks the bubble runs evaluation of anatomy cap copy comic strips for further production and application is a very interesting article where there is an author from korea and he has used uh, i i have had the privilege of listening to this author in a, in a anatomy conference in chandigarh excellent work he has done he is using cartoons and through the uh, cartoon route he is able to teach many many anatomical facts and concepts now from an embryological point of view at the end of the class of embryology day after day week after week by the, at the end my summary about embryology will be for the student look students the human body is basically a collage what kind of a collage in terms of embryology it is nothing but plates cups sacs tubes cages basins spaces arch arches and domes i am sure you will agree because these are the terminologies we commonly use in uh, embryology uh, discussion now you see this is actually a, a, a tea cup or or a coffee cup whatever it may be and you can see that is an ovum understanding oogenesis over a cup of coffee next i just want to recall that in recent uh, uh days or in recent uh, last maybe 10 years or so i see increasing number of medical institutions anatomy departments uh, organizing this rangoli uh, uh, competitions for students while one ha- on one hand it it promotes participatory and very enthusiastic learning certainly it also brings about uh, another aspect of uh, uh, introducing an element of interest uh, among the students this is from the gadag uh, medical college government medical college gadag where i had gone for a workshop and the students had shown all this uh, uh, they had dra- actually done not drawn these rangolis on the floor not only rangolis they are using fruit art they are using vegetable art other mechanisms by which they are able to uh, compare and relate now you can even think of you know once the digital medium is available you can even think beyond that you can have one liners you can have two liners you can have a combination of pictures and script you see here is a liver of course it's a it's a liver dissection exclusively for the cunard's uh, classification however that apart living to drink or drinking to live you see this is some reference to alcohol and liver all the time trying to say is these patients have got themselves confused they don't know whether they are living to drink or drinking to live in the confusion now they have become slides in histopathology next results suggest now let's uh, let's look at this ref- reference first yes spoonful of eponyms help the pathology go down using food eponyms and visual mnemonics in preclinical pathology education i just given two examples wart cell carcinoma and coffee bean nucleus results suggest that the students not only learn and retain pathology knowledge through this type of activity but they are also able to find these eponyms and mnemonics 
extremely useful as they prepare for their USMLE step exams, their clinical clerkships and also subsequently in their future practice. Students empirically benefit from the use of these memory aids and find them uh, this type of a, a learning to be reasonably enjoyable. Next, this is one of my favorite slides. In a, in a class on kidney, we talk about the kidney as bean shape and the bean is kidney shape. You see, this side kidney says I am bean shape, that side I am kidney shape. The bean says I am kidney shape, but what exactly is the shape of the kidney? It would have been nice if the medical student is taught that it is oval shape with a lateral convexity and a medial concavity and in the me above and below the medial concavity there is another convexity so that the hilar pattern is absorbed into the design. This may have been a wonderful way of putting about the um, putting across the shape of the kidney. Therefore, you see when it comes to the use of digital art we have seen that there is a need there is a resource material available to fulfill this need of utility and you also need a patient and a tolerant audience it may be anybody students colleague staffs or patients in whatever situation you can imagine connecting examples sometimes can be very very glamorous and you know fantastic like you see these are cells known as chandelier cells seen in the layer 2 of the cerebral context they actually look like chandeliers next therefore we are now at a stage where we are looking at digital art applications in anatomy and medicine in general so the topic of today's discussion is digital art and the medical education is we can use it for at least if not a complete coverage we are among other things we can use it for emphasis humor poetry theme comparisons examples pun sarcasm paintings ceramic art and uh, pharma ads and uh, things like that now you see this is an interesting slide to say the future stomach that means future anatomy and here the stomach says at the pyloric region restricted entry only digitally authenticated foods will be allowed that's just for uh, fun and here is another one to depict post trauma neuronal regeneration it's a concept emphasis now you see one aspect of embryo i told you those cups and shapes etc another aspect in, is about folds there are folds and folds and folds that's what we are trying to say in this now if you type in the word digital art in medical education you you get this was done about two days back you get thou, thou, one lakh eighty one thousand sorry eighteen thousand one hundred and seventy one references so that means there is a lot of research going on uh, across the world now you see what is taught not taught in embryology when you look at it in a sarcastic way organogenesis if you miss your time you will have to hang there itself wherever you are now i think i am referring to the omphalocele you can remember this for the horse shoe shaped kidney you can remember it for the mid loop or mid gut rotation etc as a few examples now literature uh, we will we will go a little a little more in uh, this thing art as a learning tool the medical student's perspective on implementing visual art in histology education that means they have made an attempt to to use this as a visual art it can be used in serial na narrations slide by slide four liners and two liners can explain slides arts based learning as the ability to establish democratic environments in which learner and the teacher's knowledge and skills are seen as different but equally valuable there is some script regarding its promotion towards self-directed learning you see this is a very interesting line art where i have used digital subtraction or you can even call it as digital addition 
uh, where a part of the thing is highlighted and then put back on the slide itself. For example, here I have extracted one blood vessel and uh, that blood vessel itself, I have colored it and put it back on the same slide. So that way I can color code my entire history, uh, gross anatomy and dissections. Therefore, we are basically at the end of the day, whether we are medical or engineering or whatever subject we are taking, we are all storytellers and now we are, we are trying to acquire another name called digital storytellers because it is a combo storytelling with digital components namely text, pictures, recorded audio, narrations etc. And there are articles where medical how digital storytelling can be applied in health sciences profession and there is a systematic reviews are also that level of research is available. Now you see this is one of my favorites, uh, this is one of my slides which has been ranked a favorite among my uh, fans, disc prolapse. Somebody says strawberry Oreo cookies highlight the disc prolapse, the blue macaron humorously sticking out its tongue adds an element of emphasis to the understanding. Therefore, digital art in medical education can be used for relating or connecting to unrelated items. Helps, uh, hence, that helps to understand a concept or a fact and more importantly, in the name of understanding, it also gets uh, embedded in memory and it can be easily recalled. It also, in a, in a more uh, wider understanding, it also helps us to let go strong notions and preconceived ideas and therefore helps us to uh, understand the subject better. Art as a learning tool, the medical student perspective in, on implementing visual art, again this is yet another uh, topic uh, using in histology. The example here is like this, the students in one particular university that is the reference from the previous paper, the previous slide, what what is happening is in, in the histology record where they have to draw the diagram of whatever slide it is, esophagus or stomach or whatever, in addition to drawing the histology diagram using say hematoxylin and eosin. The histology record book has another space or a small area where the student is expected to draw his own rememberable version of the same drawing so that it acts as a memory aid. I think this is something wonderful and I, I wish I could implement it in, uh, in this part of the world. Focus therefore is on affective learning, understanding using uh, where there is a strong influence of emotion in the learning process. Next, then it is also believed that this method of you know using line art and digital art and other, this also helps to reduce stress during the learning process. The strength of our stories, a quantitative, qualitative analysis of multi-institutional GME storytelling even, that means there are even storytelling con, you know. Uh, competitions that are arranged and there are literature and papers available on this. For millennia, humans have told stories to make, yes, make sense to the world, to articulate shared understanding and build community thoughts and feelings. Medicine is no exception. The AAMC collects stories and poetry from health professionals and here is an article, the fundamental role of arts and humanities in medical education. Now, most of my work in this field are available in this channel of mine, um, histology as well as gross anatomy, histomed and VBS anatoma. Now, anatomy has not changed. Our understanding of anatomy has however drastically changed. Now, that is the point you need to understand. Technology is therefore an enabler in our understanding. Remember, we are the change and we have to bring about the change. Thank you.